Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 19th of February uh, and the time has just gone 12.15 GMT, quarter past 12 UK time. Uh, and this is our Monday Market Webinar and as always with our webinars, uh, we will quickly go through the risk warning slides first of all. Uh, I'll leave this up on the screen there for you, Jack, for you guys to read. Uh, it's very straightforward. It essentially states anything that is covered in today's webinar is just purely a, my own thoughts and my own comments. Uh, this should not be, ex ex um, be construed as explicit trading advice. Uh, this is, this is, I'll leave this on, on the screen here for you uh, guys to have a quick read over. It's all fairly straightforward. And if you're a regular to our webinars uh, and uh, other videos that we do, uh, you will be uh, familiar with the practice of the uh, risk warning slides. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. Um, while you're reading over that, I'll have a quick rundown of what's been going on in the financial markets since the close of play uh, on Friday. And the short answer for that is not a whole lot. Um, we had a good session in, in, in a positive session finish in New York uh, on Friday. Uh, we also had a positive session in Japan overnight. But we have the Chinese market remains closed as it is a spring festival the, uh, in, in China. Speaking of closed markets, today the, the New York Stock Exchange will be closed as it is President's Day in the United States of America. And the Canadian market will also be closed uh, as it is Family Day in Canada. Uh, and for that reason, um, the fact that we have you know, a few major markets out, um, out of commission that are on holidays, or the traders are away. Is we have seen low volatility and low trading volumes in London, and it's likely to be the case around the the, uh, the globe today. So today's session may not be the most interesting, but that doesn't mean we can have a quick look ahead to what's going on in the next few trading sessions, and also keep an eye out for certain price pledge price movements uh, that, that 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 could be on the horizon in the next few days. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with our trading platform, what I'm going to do now is do a quick rundown of the major economic uh, events of the week. So, looking on the, on the trading platform, look at the market pulse, fourth option down, market calendar. It gives you a breakdown of the important economic indicators that are that are that is due out during the week. So, turning your attention to tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow the big one, the big one to watch out for tomorrow is going to be the, the German Zoo, German ZEW business conference report coming out at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and then later on at 3 p.m. we have the Eurozone consumer confidence figure coming out. Turning our attention to what's going on on Wednesday, uh, we, today Wednesday is going to be the day for all the PMI reports, the manufacturing PMI, PMI manufacturing and uh, service PMI reports coming out from France uh, at, at 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, Germany at half past eight, and the eurozone as a whole at nine o'clock. Uh, later on, uh, on Wednesday morning, we have UK unemployment, and also probably more, even more important nowadays is probably actually the wage growth figures. Added to that, we also have public sector net borrowing. Um, unemployment in, in the United Kingdom is at a the lowest in, 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 in over four decades. Um, so I think, like with the United States, the, the UK, like with the United States, um, on the, the headline unemployment figure is very impressive and it's at multi decade lows. But the area when you hear about individuals being in the squeezed middle is exactly, um, is exactly what, we're, what we're looking at here on the wage, on the wage growth. Headline on unemployment is something politicians love to talk about, but if wages aren't going up as well at, at the same rate in which jobs are being created, people people who are working tend, tend, to, tend to get a bit squeezed, especially as inflation in the UK has held steady at 3%. So if your wages are unchanged but the cost of living is going up, your real income is declining. And that is one of the, one of the kind of big issues that politicians have to face. Um, have to face. And also, we, it was the very um, impressive wage growth data that we saw in the recent non-farm payrolls from the United States, which got everyone thinking about potentially four rate hikes from the Fed this year. So keep an eye out um, on the wage growth figures from the UK on Wednesday morning at half past nine. Uh, also looking ahead to, to Wednesday, existing home sales from the United States. Uh, and then we also, on top of that, got a, a Canadian budget figures coming out later on in the session. Speaking of uh, home sales, the home sa the the recent housing data that we saw from the United States was also was, was very impressive only uh, on Friday. So keep an eye out for the, for the for the existing home sales that's coming out on Wednesday. Turning our attention now to Thursday morning, 
We have the CPI numbers coming out of, of France at 7.45. We have the IFO, IFO business conference survey coming out of Germany at 9 o'clock in the morning. Half nine, uh, big, big one to watch out for, will of, course, will of course be UK GDP. Uh, we also have CPI numbers coming out from Italy. And this is all going to feed into the overall Eurozone CPI, which is due out on Friday. Uh, also keep an eye out on, on, uh, on, on Thursday for uh, Canadian retail sales. That's going to be coming out at half one. And then uh, on Wednesday as well, uh, sorry, Thursday, we do have the initial jobless claims, as you do every Thursday at half past half past uh, one o'clock in the day. And then because it's because the today is President's Day and today is uh, and today is uh, today is a closed day for trading in the United States, the oil inventory figures which usually come out on a Wednesday at half past three are going to be out at four o'clock on Thursday. So keep an eye out for that. Um, looking uh, at Friday's Friday morning, German GDP first thing out is out is out is out early doors. On uh, seven o'clock in the morning, uh, scrolling down throughout the day, at ten o'clock we have eurozone CPI. As I mentioned, some of the big major co major countries within the eurozone have the CPI figures coming out on on um, on Thursday morning, and now we're looking at the, the the region as a whole. And then, of course, what we have here is Bank of Canada core inflation. We have the inflation figures coming out from Canada at, at half past one in the day, and uh, that's going to be largely it for the week ahead of us. Uh, some of the major topics to look at of, of, of what happened in the last few days, in the last 48 hours or so. Record Bank Kaiser had, a, had, a, had an okay update. Um, total sales rose by, rose by 2%. Analysts were expecting about 2.1%. Um, but when you strip out their um, strip out one of the recent acquisitions year on year, the number of actual um, sales did right, was actually flat on the year. So it wasn't as as impressive as initially thought. Um, that being said, the share price has been in a, in a bit of a downward trend for the last for the last couple of years, and today's update didn't really do much to actually kind of turn around uh, investor confidence. What else is on the go? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, right move have stated that average house prices in the UK grew by 0.8 percent. That's an improvement on the previous reading uh, uh, of 0.7 percent. But bearing in mind, over the last 10 years, average house prices have uh, been growing by 1.6 percent. So. The rate is very much subpar, sub-average, uh, it's, and, and also in that update, Rightmove stated that the London property boom has come to an end. And I say that in, in investors, sorry, off, people who are selling property uh, in London should uh, lower their expectations and also, in translation, lower their offering price because the market isn't as strong as, as it once was. Um, so what we've seen is we've seen, you know, stocks like Persimmon, Berkeley Group, Berkeley Group rather, who are very much uh, London focused, their share prices in the red today, and also other companies like Bellway and, and Persimmon Homes as well. Uh, like I said, on that, it's been a relatively quiet day in terms of actual corporate news flows, and because because China was closed and the US and Canada will be closed, uh, I suspect it's going to be a fairly uh, f fairly quiet day on the markets. Uh, I'll take a look now at some of the major indices and see how they're getting on pr uh, price action wise. I was looking over the uh, the, the charts uh, before I uh, before I began the webinar, and it's fairly it's basically a very similar theme. We've obviously had this massive sell off a few weeks ago, and then we've been kind of clawing back some of the ground since. And it would appear that we are kind of gaining more that we, are, that we are heading in the right direction, and we are correcting the major sell off that we did have, and. Sometimes it's often said of, of financial markets and particularly of technical analysis, the study of charts, they can be a self fulfilling prophecy. And I think when it comes to market corrections, uh, that is an area that, that I'll be in agreement, with, in, in agreement with, in that whenever a market bounces back, the more it can continue to correct itself and recoup some of the losses, the more likelihood it, that could continue because the feel good factor is there. If, if traders are buying into it, those those who are kind of playing the wait and see are waiting on the fence. Then they 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 see the upper price movement as a sign that you know what there is confidence out there. People obviously are clearly riskier than I if they're going in now. But if 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 if, if um if the market keeps on going up, there's a feel that I may miss the boat in terms of getting in at a relatively cheap price. So the chart here I'm looking at is of the FTSE 100, and to be honest, it's fairly similar across the board of all the major indices. So. As we can see here, we, we, when we had a major, the major decline here that began late January into early February, as the market was coming off here, 
looking down here at the MACD indicator and the MACD histogram, we saw a steady rise in negative momentum. So as the market was pushing lower, we saw a full-on increase in negative momentum. So the, neg the, 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 the MACD indicator confirmed that the momentum was to the downside. And as you can see here now, the market is slowly but surely correcting itself. Uh, and within that, what we can see here is negative momentum is solidly and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and um, consistently declining. So the selling pressure is, is, is in decline. The market's moving higher. As you can see here, we reach a level today that we haven't seen since, uh, well, well, actually for basically two weeks. So it's essentially a two-week high today, which is very common on, on, some, on some of the other indices as well. Rather two-week high. We're creating higher highs all along here. Granted, um, we still haven't pulled that, recouped all of the losses, but nonetheless, we are heading in the right direction. If we could do continue to move on from here, our next level to watch out for potentially could be 7,400. It's a big psychological number. And notice how Axel is going to both, both support here and resistance in around this price. And then north of that, the next big level to keep an eye out for could be the 2 day moving average, uh, which comes to play in around 7,455 or so. The 30 moving average is, is widely always seen as a kind of a kind of barometer of how, if a if market is, is has a positive outlook or a negative outlook. Obviously, south of it is quite is negative, positive is quite is is is, is uh, not north of it is, is, is positive. But you know, as we said here, you know, it depends on which, if you do want to buy into the markets, do you want to wait until the market turns goes goes above the 50 day moving above the 30 moving average and then look to potentially get into it, or do you want to take on some more risk and potentially buy into it now? As I was saying. The more market, the more market moves higher. It's almost like the more likely it's it's going to be higher. It's going to push higher. It's going to continue moving higher because those investors who are keeping an eye on the on the price around now, they may may feel that the market is is uh, is correcting itself, and push on higher from there. But it depends how much risk you potentially want to take on. But also bearing in mind, given that that the levels that we've come from. The market could, could also, we've, we've only, we've only uh, pulled back about a third or less than half of the, of the ground we've lost, we've, we've lost. So the market could easily run out of steam and turn over on itself and look to have a new, have a, have a new leg lower. So uh, areas that we could potentially, uh, we, could, uh, we could look to move, move uh, back towards, we could potentially move back, to, back down towards 7,200 or perhaps even down towards 7,100 itself. And obviously the, the big one to keep an eye out for the downside would of course be 6,919. Which is which is a low from uh from uh from Wednesday from Tuesday the sixth of February. I'll turn our attention now over to what's going on in the DAX. Um, it's a fair like I said it's a, it's a fairly similar uh, situation with the DAX. So we've had the major sell off here once again. We saw a steady rise in negative momentum. The, the market's pushing higher here. A, ser a series of higher highs and higher lows. Classic sign of an upward trend. Are you also seeing a decline in negative momentum on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram? Areas to keep an eye out for to the upside. Like I said, it looks very similar to, to the shape of the FTSE chart. And it is this area here um, in around 12,741. As you can see, it actually, uh, this, this price here actually does in near, near, near enough support on a couple of occasions and resistance on one of the occasions. It also coincides with the 30-day moving average. So this could be a level to watch out for. If you break north of the 30-day moving average here, the next level to keep an eye out for to the upside could be this price here of uh, just, just, just north of 13,000. Notice how the, the two uh, in, um, three moving averages are actually kind of, are kind of coinciding over, over around this area here in itself. Bearing in mind that if you look at the 50-day moving average, the 50-day moving average acts as support here and here on a, on a couple of occasions in January, and the 30-day and 100-day moving average managed to it, it traded south of the 100-day moving average here, but, but it didn't it didn't close below it. So these are areas that are pre this this this, this price action here, the 50-day moving average does have previous history of acting as support, so therefore could act as 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 a, a resistance in the future. Uh, a, nor a break north of that could look as to, could look at taking us back up towards thirteen thousand three hundred, and if we go back beyond beyond that, then we could be looking heading up towards thirteen thousand six hundred, seven hundred, and eight hundred, so on and so forth. If the market fit, if the market does manage to turn over on itself from here, we could be looking heading back down towards the uh, twelve thousand and ninety region, or perhaps even down towards eleven thousand nine hundred. Or maybe this is another major sell-off down towards 11,692. 
the US markets are in better shape than, than those uh, in Europe. If you take a look here at the Dow Jones, as you can see here, it's, it's, it's a very similar story all over, isn't it? It's, you know, rap, rapid sell-off here, a lot of ground was lost, but notice here how, how the, the, Dow, the Dow Jones traded below its 200-day moving average, but on both occasions managed, managed, to kind of, uh, managed to kind of bounce off of it. Uh, granted, this is a good lesson in uh, if you're looking at putting stop losses or entry prices or, or limits limit buys to enter the market. It's a good example of uh, if you're if you're looking at entering a market or exiting a market, uh, you don't want to be too wedded to a, a certain a precise price just because you may have had your stop loss just sitting at above the 30 moving average or on the 30 moving average, and then of course what do you know of the market trades through it and then bounce back up again and then same again here so it isn't always the case that it'll actually be perfectly stopped at a certain price we could see a scenario where the trade just slightly through it um, or, or, or perhaps even stop short of it so just something just, just something to keep in mind but as we can see here the turn of the moving average there thereabouts acted as, as a, a support for the dow jones the market's pushing higher here we're seeing a trend of higher highs a steady decline in negative momentum the market continues to push higher here We've even actually closed above, holding above the 50-day moving average, which just gives you an indication of how bullish the market is. So if you continue to move on north of here, oh, sorry, I apologize. I kept saying the Dow Jones. This, of course, is the S&P 500. I do apologize about that. As they're pushing higher here on the S&P 500, the next area to potentially keep an eye out to the upside could be this, this price here of uh, 2,796. Notice how it acted as, as a... Resistance to the upside and support on the downside on this particular occasion here. So it's an, it's an area which may act which may be an active resistance should you press on higher from here. North of that, uh, 2,800 would be the next big level to keep an eye out on. And if you take out 2,800, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a good chance we could look to get a test, a test at the, uh, the old time highs of 2,877. And then beyond that, the next big psychological number that I go for will, of course, be 2,900. Move to the downside. We may find some support coming to play in around the 50-day moving average, uh, which comes into play in around 2,727. Notice how, once again, once we kind of got above the 30-day moving average on Friday, it managed to just ever so slightly, just trade slightly below, but, but by and large, it, it acted as support. Move to the downside once again. We may find some support coming into play in around the 200-day 100 moving average at 2,655, or maybe even down as low as 50. The areas to keep an eye out for and then obviously if you do have another major sell-off this price here south of the 30, 30 moving average this price here at 2532 that would be the big one to keep an eye out for seeing as it was a recent low uh in from february i look now at the dow jones and it's going to be a fairly similar situation on the uh, on the dow jones in terms of the in terms of the price action so we've had the we had the major sell-off had the sell-off, I saw a steady increase in negative momentum. Now we're seeing the market push higher and recoup, recoup some of the ground. What we're seeing on the down, on the chart here is a steady decline in negative momentum. So the, the, the selling pressure, the pressure from the bears is, is in reverse, it's, it's declining. And all the while the market's pushing higher. And once again, it's pushed north of the 50-day moving average on Friday. And now we're actually sitting above the 50-day moving average. So... If we continue to push higher here on the Dow Jones, we could be looking at running into resistance potentially at this price action here of 2000, sorry, 25,588. And then north of that, up towards, potentially heading towards uh, 26,000. And if you go beyond 26,000, there's a fairly good chance we, we could be looking at testing the, the, uh, the all time highs of uh, 20, 26,706. And then, of course, beyond that, you know, traders are looking for big psychological numbers like. 27,800, 900, and, and so on. If you, if you do manage to, to turn over on itself, again, if you do manage to turn over on itself on the, on the Dow Jones, we could be looking at getting support from the 50-day from the moving average in around 25,200, or perhaps the, the, this price action here of 25,106. And then if you move, move south of that again, we could be looking heading back down towards the 100-day the moving average at 24,300. And it's only if, if we do have a, a major sell-off, we could be looking at head, head, head the, testing the February low of 23,138. So all the while, 
all the while the, uh, the, the indices are pushing higher. We have seen a bit of a negative move on gold in the last couple of sessions. Uh, as you can see here, gold has been broadly trending, uh, has been broadly pushing higher over the last year or so. It's been on to some quite choppy moves, but by and large, what we've seen is a series of higher highs and higher lows. Obviously, this, this price action here would be the, the notable exception. But if you look at, look at the price action since December, over the last two months, gold's been in a fairly solid upward trend. Classic example of higher highs and higher lows. Granted, we have seen a bit of selling in the last couple of days. But if, but if you do manage to kind of drift lower from here, we could be looking ahead back down towards 13.40. And then if south of that, we could be looking ahead back down towards 13.20 uh, with this price here. And then if, if you move a bit south of 13.20, uh, the next area to keep an eye out for would be the kind of 13.07, 13.06 area. And then, of course, 1300 the big psychological number. But as I was saying, the trend for the last couple of months has been to the upside. So if you do manage to push higher from here, we could be only looking at testing... January's high of 1366 and if we go beyond 1366 you could be looking at testing 1375 and we haven't seen 1375 on gold uh, since the summer of 2016 it was uh, it was July of 2016 uh, that was the last time we saw 1375 so there are the, there are the price, price points to keep an eye out for on gold usually gold um, has the, the, the flight to quality uh, effect or the flight to quality impact and what that means is that whenever there's uncertainty in global stock markets, we see gold do quite well. But on the week here of early February, when global stock markets were under immense pressure and, and, and were uh, enduring severe sell-offs, what we saw in the price of gold, it actually fell. It fell because the value of the US dollar rose. And the US dollar rose, as you mentioned about those good wage data figures coming out that came off from the US a few five days ago, showed us that wage growth in the US is picking up. And that got traders thinking about: Are we going to have a, are we going to have tighter monetary policy from the Federal Reserve, and are we are we going to have it at a quicker rate? Uh, so, in, in early 2018, traders were thinking about possibly three rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. On the back of those wage, on the, on the back of the most recent wage growth data from the US, we're now potentially looking at about possibly four rate hikes. And that's why gold as it hasn't actually done as well as you would think it would. So I would say nowadays, recently, gold has the inverse relationship with the US, with the US dollar, which is traditionally had. But if you're looking at trading gold, I'll keep an eye on what's going on on the US dollar. And actually, um, speaking of um, commodities and US dollar products, we'll continue things going with the commodity theme and have a look at what's going on on the price of uh, Brent crude oil. So, Brent crude oil since June last year is in a solid upward trend. Classic example of higher highs and higher lows in a solid upward trend. This was largely built on the expectation that the that OPEC would have a, have a continue their production freeze throughout 2018, which of course they did. Then there was already talk in early January that that Saudi Arabia would look at would look at extending the production freeze beyond 2018. That's in the price of oil here to a fresh three-year high. But since then. We've had a bit of profit taking, and not only have we had a bit of profit taking, we've, we've had increase, we've had high stockpile levels in the United States, and also we've had high levels of output in the United States. Um, OPEC effectively uh, want to obviously, it's in their interest for the price of oil to be driven higher, that's why they had a production cut, and that's why they extended the, the timeline of the production brought or the production cut. But guess what? When you cut oil production, you drive the price up, and when you drive the price up, you entice others and encourage others to actually start producing. So the shale producers in the United States saw the relatively high price of oil as a as a as a, uh, as a trigger uh, for producing more oil, which which they have done. The United States is now producing a over 10 million barrels of oil per day, uh, a record amount for the United States. We also have heard from countries like Iran that are looking at ramping up their production as well over the next few years. So, so. This point here, when OPEC dropped the price of oil higher with the production freeze, has now been met with increased supply. Uh, and that, of course, has prompted the traders to, to, to do uh, some profit taking. So, what I can say is that the big picture uh, uh, is still looking quite positive. Um, notice how this high, that the low here, if this is to be the low, it hasn't actually taken out this low here. So, we're still in the upward trend. It's been, it's been an upward trend for six months. So, we had, we're used to some choppy pullbacks on the price of oil. So, this just happens to be one of the bigger ones. 
once again, as the price was declining, you saw a steady increase in negative momentum. Now we're seeing the price bounce back, and we're seeing a steady decline in we're seeing a steady decline in negative momentum. So we could be looking at a, a, a bouncing back from this move here. So I know to keep an eye out for to the upside. Could be could potentially be the bitterly moving average, which comes into play basically at about. $67 a barrel on Brent. Notice how it didn't manage to act as brief, nearly a bit of, it, it, so in a way it acted as a support on that particular occasion there, and also acted as, as a support and resistance uh, back in July of last year. If it managed to take out $76 a barrel, next that big, big kind of psychological number to keep an eye out for will of course be 70 bucks per barrel, and then if we go beyond that, we'll be looking at targeting the recent uh, three-year high of 71 spot 38, and then if we go beyond that, we could we we we'd be looking at fresh multi-year highs, and we could be looking at heading through to the resistance up towards 72.74. If we do manage to turn lower on the price of oil again, we could find some some support from the recent low here. This 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 particular um uh, candle here, but at last Thursday's low of 63 dollars and 32 cents. And then if you go below that, we could be getting support in around the $62 mark area. Not, not, notice how you, we have some decent history of um, of the kind of $62 area acting as support. It's going to be a fairly similar chart as well, looking at WTI. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to WTI. And then after that, I'll do a few currency pairs. Are there any markets you guys want me to have a look at? Feel free to type in the chat box and I will, will cover those markets. So as I was saying, it's a very similar situation in terms of the price action on WTI. After reaching a three-year high, the market's come off and, and is currently bouncing back. Where once again, we are above the 50-day moving average on, on the price of WTI. So if we hold north of the 50-day moving average, we, it's, it, it, uh, we could see this, this positive move continue. A push higher on from here could bring us up to $65 a barrel. And then if you go north of that, we could be looking at heading up towards $66.73. And then, of course, beyond that, we'd be looking towards $67.68 a barrel. Move to the downside. Should we actually uh, fall back below the 50-day moving average, we could, we could find some support from Thursday's low at sixty-one, sorry, $59.73. And if you go below that, this level here of $58.10 will be the next, next big level to keep an eye out for. If we do break that level there, that, that, that will be uh, quite significant. And we could be looking at heading back towards the December low of $55.72. Let's take a look now at what's going on on the euro versus the US dollar. So broad, the big picture is that the euro, euro dollar has been in a solid upward trend. Uh, basically, over the last year or so, the euro has been really been, been pushing higher versus the, the US dollar. And in particular, uh, since November, we had a, 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 quite a poor September through, uh, through late October. But basically, since November, um, the, the single currency has been kind of gaining ground versus the US dollar. And in fact, we actually hit a, hit a new um, multi-year high here on February. Uh, a new three-year high uh, on, on Friday it just gone, so so automatically they kind of tell you that, that, that uh, how kind of positive things are for it a three-year high only a few days ago. So if you continue to move on from here, uh, we could be looking at retaking at 125, hit them towards 127, 128. There are the areas to keep an eye out for to the upside on the price of uh, on, on the euro dollar. Any moves to the downside on the single currency versus the greenback could find some support in around the 123.30 area, or perhaps even low down as low as 1, uh, 122 itself. Sterling has also had a decent run versus the US dollar uh, in the past few in the past few months since last May, since last March rather. If you draw a low between the lows of March and the lows of August, you can see here that. This, this this trend line has been broadly been respected over the last number of over the last say ten months. Granted, on a number of occasions, there were a few occasions where the market just tries to just dip below that trend line, but broadly speaking, it held up. This is another good example of don't be too uh, precise uh, with your stop losses or your limits to enter it, your limits to enter a trade, seeing as the market doesn't necessarily always you know stop at it precisely bang on where you want it to on this at a particular trend line that, that you may draw. Or a particular consolidation area, or a, or a particular moving average. 
markets will always kind of fully stop uh, where you think they might stop. So you can give yourself, give yourself a better leeway. But nonetheless, while the pound versus US dollar is north of, of this this upper trend this trend line, the outlook is likely to remain positive. As you can see here, sterling has been gaining ground versus the greenback in the last few sessions. It's been a steady decline in negative momentum. So the sellers are running out of steam, running out of pressure. And if you manage to push higher from here, we could be looking heading it back up towards 143, uh, 144, 145. These, and if these are all levels um, that that would uh, that, that would haven't been seen since the night of the EU referendum when basically sterling went from about just north to say 150 right down to 135 um, in, a, in a matter of hours. Uh, move to the downside in the pound versus the US dollar may find some support in around the, in the kind of 140 area which are pretty much sitting on now and uh, then south of that perhaps down towards 138 139 or then below that at 137.64. Right, I'm going to wrap things up now in a, in a, in a few minutes' time. We are looking, we'll, we'll do Euro, Euro sterling and then we'll do dollar yen. And then after that, we'll look to, uh, we'll look to wrap things up. If there, any, if there are any kind of questions or comments that you, you do have, feel free, to, uh, feel free to, say, to type in in the box. Um, but they're the ones I've been looking at next and moving on. So broadly speaking, since last August, uh, sterling has been losing ground versus the, the British pound. Um, it's in a, especially the last few months, but the last few months it's been definitely much kind of range bound. It hasn't been too exciting to be perfectly honest. The decent support coming into play in around the zero spot 86, 89 area, these two, these two levels here, and to the upside, um, can't, it can't seem to break north of zero spot 89, 29. For the time being, we're kind of at the higher end of that range. As you can, so as you can see here, the market has, since late January has been pushing higher, so we could be looking at retesting the, uh, the, the 2018 high of 0 spot 8929 and if we go beyond that we could be looking heading back up towards 0 spot 90 and then if we go beyond 0 spot 90 we could be looking heading up towards 0 spot 9049 uh, and any move to the downside may find some, some, some support in around the 0 spot 88 area and if you break 0 spot 88 we could be looking at heading back down towards the bottom end of the range which is 0 spot 8689 Uh, this, this is the last uh, market I'll look at now, dollar versus the Japanese yen. So what's interesting about the dollar yen is that it actually broke below, um, last week we saw it, it, it break below the September low. Uh, so the market has been in decline since November, classic example of a series of lower lows and lower highs. If we took out the low here in September, so we, we, we've, now, uh, we've now managed to bounce back. Now the big question is, if, it, if it's not the market here, We'll look at it now on a weekly chart to give you an indication of how far back that is. If, it's managed, if the market has managed to take out a low um, not seen since uh, August of last year and basically take us back to a level not seen since November 2016, over a two year low, um, we've uh, when, when we broke through this price here, we created a fresh two over in excess two year low, say 20, 26 month low. So that, that tells you. Um, how, how bearish uh, traders are on the dollar versus the versus the Japanese yen, but now we're in uh, we, we are in, in a kind of in a kind of correction or, or bounce back mode. So the market is bouncing back, but the question is, will this bounce back just be short lived? Will it turn over itself and actually look to, look to push lower at yet again? So if we do manage to kind of push higher from here, we could look at running into resistance potentially in around the 107 or the 107.32 mark. 107.32 was September's low and. It didn't act as support on the way down, but you know, it is a possibility that the traders will be keeping an eye out for that level. North of 107, spot 32, we could be looking at 108. These are areas we could potentially see the market push higher because you know, markets don't move in straight lines, but we could see the market push higher only to actually turn over on itself and then push lower yet again. So keep an eye out for 107, spot 32, or perhaps 108. We, in order for us to kind of shake out of this, shake off this downtrend that we've been in since November. It really would probably need to kind of take off this the, the February early February high of 110 spot 48 before you could become more confident that this, this that this move um, the negative move has come to an end and if you do go north of there uh, the next area to keep an eye out for will be 111 the spot 45 the 2 day moving average and then north of that up towards 112 but if the market does manage to turn over on itself we could be looking at he heading back down towards 106 
105 spot 54 of the recent low and then of course below that um, 105 itself now what, I, what I'm quickly going to do now is I show you a few things on our website that, that may be of interest to you uh, so every every day throughout the day myself and other market analysts uh, around the world uh, here at CFC markets will do up updates on our website um, so in the in the uh, on the news and analysis section, you'll see what, what the update the update that I did here at 10 o'clock this morning is, is posted on here. You can find that by, by going to news and analysis, and all the uh, all the um, updates will be kind of collated together, and it's kind of, and there'll be several updates done throughout the day will, will be posted there. Some of those updates are posted there. Some of the updates are actually on the trading platform itself. In the inside section now the inside section can be found by going on to market ta market pulse and the second op option down so some of the op some of the updates that we do um, the details will be posted in the in inside section uh, there's actually going to be a recording of this of this of this uh, webinar is going to be on the inside section within an hour's time also what we have here a on the, uh, is the chart forum and a chart forum is, is, is essentially uh, is, is essentially uh, a screenshot of a particular chart and then my analysis or my, Michael's analysis or one of the other market analysis, analysis surrounding that particular chart. Uh, it's updated several times uh, a day and you can actually update things there yourself. So feel free to, uh, to kind of uh, begin a conversation uh, on the chart forum. And the chart forums can be found once again under market tab and then click on the second, third option down market forum. Oh, sorry, chart forum rather. Uh, and then last but not least, I just, just want to talk to you about other webinars. Under the webinars and events section where you, where you found the login for this webinar, there is a webinar on Wednesday the 21st of February at 19.30 GMT, half 7 p.m. UK time. It's a guide to modern technical analysis, which I, which I recommend tuning in for. And then, of course, next Monday the 26th of February uh, at 12.15, I'll, I'll be back in the hot seat doing uh, the Monday market update. And on Wednesday, the 28th of February at 19.30 GMT, half 7 p.m. UK time, there will be a webinar in the evening on risk management for leverage trading, which I, which I suggest you sign up for as, as many webinars as you can and get as much information under your belt as you can. Well, I do appreciate your patience and, and uh, I do appreciate you tuning in uh, and listening to me today. Uh, from all of us here at CMC Markets, I hope you have a good day and a good trading week. Thank you very much. Bye for now.